Next question is from Brian Pata. I understand the importance of rest time between sets, but what about rest time between movements? Sometimes it takes a little longer than I'd like to get from the squat rack to an open bench in a crowded gym. Does this throw off programming or anything else? No. It doesn't throw off your programming. I mean, it's different, right? If you're moving, you know, if you're resting one minute in between sets and then you change exercises and you keep that one minute, uh, that's going to be a different workout than if you go one minute between sets and then between exercises, it's five minutes because of setup or whatever. Um, to be quite honest with you, I prefer to have a longer rest period between exercises. Yeah. I'll keep the rest between sets faster, but between exercises, especially if it's different, you know, body part, you know, like he said, squat to bench. I'm going to, I'm going to wait a little bit, five, six, seven minutes before I go into my bench. I always rest. lean on quality of reps and, and performance of the reps. And so, yeah, there's sometimes where you do get fatigued and you do need a little bit more rest uh, between, you know, jumping right back in and doing the same movement. And I think that the reason why I picked this question is because this comes up a lot with the, the determined amount of time and the allotted time that's programmed in there. And you mm. got to listen to your body and you got to pay attention to the signs and signals of like how you're breathing, you know, like mm. what, like how fatigued you feel. Like it, you got to pay attention to all these things uh, and determine that for yourself. But also this is sort of like a guideline uh, that, you know, you, you can kind of shoot and aspire to. But really, at the end of the day, this is going to be determined specifically on the individual we're, we're also talking about something that is a, a splitting hair difference here totally so if you had so if they did a study and uh, of course i'm just speculating here but i feel pretty confident that if you did a study where somebody rested like sal said five to seven minutes between the exercises versus one the difference after you know six months of them training that way the, the, would be very very little mm -hmm. one of them would probably be more cardiovascular adapted because there's such low rest periods the other one wouldn't the strength difference in the two of them i don't know maybe you would see more of a strength difference in the person that actually gave them some rest i wouldn't i don't think i would see much of a difference i don't think this is one of those things that i'd have one of my clients worry too much about yeah, yeah it's not that big of a deal and you know what i'll say this even for some people um i'll this is a good this is fun try this out right because i know some people are are so concerned with keeping the pace and I got to get the sweat or whatever. If you have the time to do this, give this a shot. I, I guarantee it'll be one of your favorite workouts ever. Your hour workout, give yourself two hours. Take your time. Yeah. Go slow, practice the form, uh, lift a little heavier, uh, take breaks in between liberating. sets. Give, give yourself like a two-hour window to do a one-hour workout and spread it out, and I guarantee it'll become one of the best workouts I've ever I had. actually will never forget the day that happened to me. So <clears throat> I was training with my buddy, and this is the time I'm, I've talked on the show before. I don't like lifting partners. I had a lifting partner at the time. This was one of the reasons why I didn't like it. He loved to talk to everybody. We're in the gym one day, and we must have ran into five or six and he stops to talk every single time which draws me in we end up being at the gym for like two and a half hours i leave the gym going like that was a terrible workout yeah i didn't really get a solid pump i really didn't feel anything the next day i was sore as shit and didn't realize i just had never trained that way mm -hmm. and because i had such long rest periods i wasn't used to my body feeling that way in a workout and you're probably lifting heavier as a result and that's what ended up happening mm -hmm. and so after that i thought man anytime i have an opportunity when i don't have a time frame i might stretch this thing out to 90 to two hours why not i don't get to do it a lot because a lot of times i'm on a time crunch but if i do have the opportunity i'm gonna do that and there's tremendous benefit yeah and you can that. have fun with it like uh right now i'm doing a split where i work upper body and lower body so I'll go upper body lower body and then i'll rest and then upper lower and you know kind of like that right so when i'm doing upper body if i start with uh typically i'll start with chest or back and I'll do two exercises per body part. But rather than doing the two exercises for chest and then going and then doing the two exercises for back, you guys have seen me do this. I'll do a set for chest, then I'll do a set for back. Then I'll do a set for chest, then I'll do a set for back. And I'll mix it up that way, and it's a totally different stimulus. It's not superior, it's just different. And I get my body to, to respond again. 